whilst I was doing my service, the allowances mm -hmm. were given. I saved it up to get my first machine. Hello everybody, you're welcome to Just For Women Africa. My name is Olaleko Amosa, the founder of Just For Women Africa. And today we're going to be talking stitches. We have the CEO of um, Zama Stitches with us, with the name of um, Martha Akofanti. Yes, Akofanti. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to the show. Thank uh, you very much. But before we start on the show, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like, leave a comment, tell a friend who knows a friend about Just From Africa, and basically just spread the word around. All right, so we're going to start talking to with Martha. Yeah. Martha is a fashion designer, and she's going to be telling us about her business, um, her struggles, um, the plans for the future. We'll talk a little bit about women issues, and we'll get the conversation going. Welcome to the show, Martha. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Martha, Martha is a, a friendly, hardworking, determined woman, an entrepreneur, married, and a mother of two. A mother of two. Yeah. That's nice. Um, so um, tell us about the business which you run, um, Zama Stitches. Um, how long have you been running that for? Well, professionally, let's say five years. Five years? Okay. Um, first of all, people will be wondering, um, that's a really interesting name, Zama Stitches. How did you come up with that name? Well, so, um, when I was completing fashion school, everyone has to do their final project. Mm -hmm. So, the theme we had was to the altar. To the altar. So, we, you know, think about it there are many altars and I'm a Christian okay so I thought of what happens at the altar and I picked out the music aspects because I also sing in church mm -hmm. so then I came up with the name Zamar which is a Hebrew word for praise okay yeah so when I completed I was thinking of a name for my business and since our business is all about stitches stitching 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 mm -hmm. everything that can be stitched <laughs> is linked to fashion design and so i just combined it to summer stitches Zama stitches yeah. that's a really interesting name okay so Zama is because he prays yeah and it's worth mm -hmm. praise okay i didn't know that that's interesting i guess we all know something now. <laughs> yeah you want to say praise or say Zama. It's mm. praise well, <laughs> praise has different different there's halal there's so i just picked the Zama. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so tell us about your fashion. Um, did you you mentioned you went to school? To, yes. To, what school was that, and how long was it? Accra for? Technical University. It was Accra Polytechnic then. Okay. And it was for three years. Three years. So what happened after three years? Did you, did you jumped into um, into no, your I own did, business? Or I did, did my service. Okay. Whilst I was doing my service, the allowances. Mm -hmm. were given i saved it up to get my first machine oh that's nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> because i wasn't really into the going for interviews writing application i just told god uh, i want to start off just like that <laughs> okay i don't want to go through the stress of looking for jobs <laughs> so, so you saved up all your allowances yeah to, to get my one. first machine how long ago was that that was a year i mean how long ago was uh what year was that when you were doing? I, I completed that. in 2014. 2014. How much? Okay, how much was your allowance then? 350 cities. Sorry? 350 cities, yeah. And how much was the machine? The first one I got was 950, that's a roughly 1000 because set, setting it up and everything costed over 1000. 1000. How long did it get you to save? Well, not too long. I was really determined. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind starving myself. So, <laughs> but then while I was doing my service, some people would come to sew. Mm -hmm. So from work, I go home. I stay up to sew, or I was doing the slippers um, art that okay. came up. Okay. You know, sewing beads on slippers and selling. Okay. So I was saving up that money too. To. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So basically, it started. Um, the master chairs officially what 2014 15? 2015 or 16. Okay, so I completed service in 2015. Yeah, okay, so that'll make it roughly six, seven years. Yeah, 
Okay, well, that's a lot of experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you've been doing Zama stitches for the past six, seven years. Mm -hmm. What has been some of your challenges with, um, with owning your own business and running your own business? Well, it's, it's, it's been a tough and fun, interesting one because starting your own business is quite tough. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't have everything, you have to make sure you have everything to make the business go. I do it at my parents' place. Okay. They have a shop in front of the house. Okay. Yeah, I used to be there with my aunt. Mm -hmm. Actually, I started the sewing thing from her because she was also sewing. She was a seamstress. Yeah. So I started learning a bit from her before I went to school. So for a place, fortunately for me, I didn't struggle getting a place. And then apart from everything else, saving helped me. And I, so far I have three machines or four, mm -hmm. four, yes, and the rest. I'm still saving up to get more, up yeah, more. as the business grows. Oh. But my <coughs> real challenge sometimes is the clients because you have to work with different people, different opinions, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's hectic. You know, some people come and some people don't know what they want. Okay. And if you suggest something to, and they're like, no, I don't really like it, like, because they don't really know what they want, so you have to try and just accommodate them yeah. <laughs> in a way and those who know what they want to will make sure you have to do exactly as they see it sometimes some people also don't really know like what goes into the work mm -hmm. so they think oh you just pick the fabric and boom everything happens it <laughs> yeah they, they don't know the stress that goes into it so they give you a timeline and but then i i like to meet my deadline often i don't like to disappoint this so yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to ask you a question because one, one, of, one of the jokes around, yeah. I don't know whether in other African countries, but here, but here in Ghana, mm -hmm. let's put this on side. Um, sorry. I was going to ask another question because um, one of the jokes which, which goes around, I don't know whether it is in Ghana, whether it happens in other African countries is. Mm -hmm. If you have a program for, let's say, the uh, 20th, mm -hmm. do not go to your seamstress or your tailor and give it to her on the uh, 18th mm -hmm. or 15th. Mm -hmm. Make sure you give it to her like two, three weeks before, <laughs> probably the previous <laughs> month. Yeah. Because um, the, the myth is in town that, you know, um, tailors are you disappoint. You disappoint. You don't deliver on time. Mm -hmm. uh, are you one of those? No, I would say. No. So, so you never have to do it. You never disappointed anything. I try definitely. I try to meet my deadline. Especially and during if, Christmas. Yeah, and I don't take. I don't like to take more than I can make, mm -hmm. because I plan my week according to the things I have to make. And mm -hmm. if you come late, some people come late, like on the twentieth of December, and expect you to deliver before the twenty-fifth. That is a short time, right? Yeah, and kind they are of, not kind willing of to pay yeah. express to. So, so what was my express for uh, international viewers we're watching? That's um, from a day to a week. A day to a week. I give uh, 14 working days. Okay. Yeah. And so at least I have day. two weeks to make an outfit. To make an outfit. Because definitely I have other people to attend to. Okay. Yeah. But if there's not much work, I can squeeze you up in a week. In a week? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. I was going to ask another question. You mentioned you have two or three machines. Mm -hmm. Definitely, this time I'm not going to, it's not going to save, take you long to save up to get you more machines. Either. That's not your business. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends. But basically, is it just, um, do you have other staff or is it just you who works, who works, you work alone? Yes, I work alone, but I have three understudying girls at the moment. Okay. What do you mean by understudying? Apprentices. Okay. All right. So meaning they're from school and they're learning on a job? No. Um, they didn't do fashion. They didn't but do they, fashion? Yeah. So you're basically teaching so some, some after secondary school couldn't continue. So okay. yeah, they have to learn a trade. So it's like they're learning a trade. Oh, okay. So you just take them on. How long does you do that, that last for? Three years. Three years? Yeah. Two and a half. But it depends. If by that, that time you're not really good, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'll continue for another six months. Okay, that's interesting. So what, you teach them how to cut, so? Everything. Everything. Mm. Okay. Do they get paid or is just no, like basically at school? Yeah, they are learning. Okay. But once in a while I tip them. Okay, that's important. <laughs> yeah, they help out with my children too. Okay. They're like their third mothers. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. All right. So, um, you've been doing Zama stitches for the past, uh, since 2015, 2016, yeah. you said. How do you come about your creativity? Because I'm looking at your, on your um, Instagram page, but you love your designs. Thank you. <laughs> How do you come about your creativity to create that dress for that person? Okay, most times these days, clients normally come with their own styles. They go to the net and pick their own styles, or they come and you know combine two or three, depending on what they want. But those who don't come with their styles, they tell you to just look at me and make something for me. So look at the person, the type of clothes the person likes, and the events the person is taking it to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put all that into consideration, mixing colors and fabrics, mix matching. Mix matching. You see what really works. <laughs> Okay, all right, guys, you're still watching Just Women Africa. Do not forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, tell your friend who knows your friend about Just Women Africa. And of course, your feedback is also important. So let us know what you think about the show. All right, and we're today we're here with Martha Aku. Akufanti. Akufanti. All right. What part of Ghana is that from? Sorry? Akufanti. What part of, what part of Ghana? It's Akan. Akan. Okay, that's interesting because I've never heard of the name Akufanti before. <laughs> I haven't heard it anywhere either. <laughs> Okay, so um, can you tell us what's, what, what's your um, opinion about the fashion industry in Ghana? Do you think it's growing? Do you think it's declining? Do you think there's more, there's more room for improvement? Well, fashion in Ghana has really improved mm -hmm. because previously when, when we talked about fashion in Ghana, it was like the carbon slate, the men wearing the cloth just like that. Mm -hmm. But recently we have adapted the Western style. So we use African prints to make whatever Western style clothing you want. And okay. it has really improved because before then the youngsters didn't really want to you know, wear the carbine slits and they thought it was old people's style. Mm -hmm. But now they are really, really interested in the African. And because of the Friday wear these days, mm -hmm. So every Friday, everyone wants to be in an African print. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's really working. Really working. Mm. Okay, but so just to explain to our international readers, Friday we're up in Ghana um, during the time of President Kufo, mm -hmm. um, a uh, a new law was passed, or a way to promote um, African African prints mm -hmm. in the market. Um, so the government decided that every Friday. Uh, people should um, wear African attires, African print fabrics. So when she was referring to African um, Friday wear, that's what she was referring to. Yeah. All right. So that has really picked up the helping, helping. Oh yes. It has. So do, do you, so um, on the percentage, you know, roughly, when people come to your shop, the percentage for African fabric is higher than yeah. plain. It is, and sometimes we mix the prints with the plain fabrics, uh, it could be sateen, crepe, sutin fabric, the western fabrics. Okay, yeah, that's, I was going to ask that question. Yeah, so we mix. So you mix. So you do you use a lot of locally made fabrics or imported? Both. Both. It depends. Because the, the crepe, the sutin, the, the sateen, those ones are imported. Okay. But the wax prints, we get them here. You get them here? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting to know. All right, so I was going to ask, you said you're married, um, you have kids, how mm -hmm. many? Two. Two. A boy and a girl? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, how are you able to manage to combine um, your professional life as a work as a woman together with your family life? How are you able to balance it to make sure that, you know, your work doesn't suffer, your kids don't suffer, the husband gets at attention mm -hmm. and all that. How are you able to balance all that? And also, also of course, you're supposed to have your own me time to yourself. How do you balance all that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thankfully, both myself and my husband, we all run our businesses. 
okay. ease into construction so we, we can manage our time okay. to you know we don't work with people to close the time they want us to close yeah okay. and then I'm grateful for my family especially my mother and my younger sister they help with the children a lot and my apprentices too okay so yeah I manage my time while I try. <laughs> I try. And when I'm really busy, my husband understands. Okay. Sometimes he even comes to keep me company in the shop. In the shop. Oh, yeah. that's sweet. That's nice. <laughs> that's really nice. All right. Um, so, what do you think is the future? What's the future for Zamas teachers? The future is big. Okay. It's great. Some years back, someone asked me that question, and I said, in five years, I want the most teachers to cross the borders of Ghana. And thankfully, it has. I have a few clients in the USA. Okay. I have um, some in, what's that, what's that country? <laughs> I've really forgotten, but definitely it has crossed the borders of Ghana. Okay. And I'm praying it, it goes further. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's really nice. All right. So, um, I'm going to ask a question. Um, I usually ask everybody this question that comes on the show. It's a woman's show, just to get their opinion. Um, women say it's difficult to the man's world. Uh, men take advantage of them sexually. Mm. You could have been a company on the board of directors, or they probably one or two people. Um, what basically women does feel like is a struggle mm -hmm. but women like you have been able to you know, do something you're making something yourself yeah. other people, women have been able to do it what advice can you give out to women out there who feel that it's just a man's world and men just want to take advantage of them well what i can say is once you are focused and you know what you want mm -hmm. you have your values mm -hmm. don't let any man you know, make you break their values and principles. If he make advances at you, just say no. No and make it a no. And be determined, be hard working, focus, pray. Once you plan, everything will fall into place. Just work hard and everything will fall into place. When, before I started, I listed out the things I wanted, the things I wanted my company to have and where I wanted the masters to go and planning has helped it has really helped so be focused plan pray work at it and you get there okay you heard it from martha herself from uh, the master teachers focus pray and you get there definitely get there mm -hmm. okay we're about to round up um for viewers who are there watching um who um, want to get the outfits so on who want to get in touch with you um, can you tell them how the, how they will to get in touch with you? Okay. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with Zama Stitches, you can check out my Instagram pages. Zama Stitches on Facebook and Zama underscore Stitches on Instagram. Or get in touch on 020-500-1020. 020-500-1020. Thank you. <laughs> That's a really nice number. What do you, how do you, yeah. how do you get that number? <laughs> I don't even know. Well, I had a friend in Vodafone. Okay. So when I said I wanted the Vodafone number, she got me that. She got the number. Yeah. That's very really nice. Can definitely not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you've been watching Just From in Africa. My name is Ola Leko. I'm also. And I got you something. Oh, I'm not your friend, Daniel. Oh. A little something from Zamasi. From Zamasi. Oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay, so I got a gift. Yeah. Uh, let me open I realize you really like black in your interview. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, wow. Well, I actually it's got it from the last I don't know if you can see. <laughs> let me see if I can open it. Maybe uh, maybe it's when you wear it. Yes. Maybe wait later when you wear it, then the viewers can see. I know. All right, this is really nice. Oh, <laughs> all the way from Zama Stitches, just like, oh, this is really nice. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. going to rent this, it's definitely fully programmed. <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much. Welcome. We really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Oh my God, I'm really, really touched. I don't know if you can get to see it again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martha. And You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we're about ending the show. Um, thank you very much, Martha. Thank you for having uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to the next show, do not forget to subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell your friend who knows a friend about um, uh, Just Women Africa. Leave your comment. We appreciate your feedback. So tell us also what you think about the show. Uh, you can leave the comment below or you can send your email to women at justformanafrica.com. That's women at the number four, justformanafrica.com. And um, to the next show with Matt and I, it is. Bye bye. Bye. For now. For now. <laughs>